Hi, I'm Kinkas, and I'm a synth DIY guy. It's been a while since I did a simple hack with off-the-shelf parts, so I decided to do one this week. I've always liked alternative controllers, and one type in particular I've been playing with for a while is the touch plate. I've made a few experiments with it before. About a year ago I even designed a simple three-voice standalone synth, the Tactile, which I taught at a few workshops. The principle behind the touch plate is very simple. It's based on the skin's electrical resistance rather than on capacitance. Capacitive touch usually requires complicated circuits with reference clocks and things like that. This resistive one is dead simple. Check it out. We'll take a 9 volt battery and a touch plate which we will etch out of PCB material with ferric chloride. The idea here is to have two terminals that do not touch each other. We will bridge the terminals together by touching them with our fingers or by blowing on them. More pressure means lower resistance. Also more humidity means less resistance, which is why gently blowing over the plate works. And moistening your fingers also makes it more responsive. We'll also need a mono audio jack, a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a 10k potentiometer as a range control. Current from the battery goes through the touchpad as a variable resistor with infinite maximum resistance. The 1 microfarad capacitor acts as a low pass filter to reduce any ripple coming from our bodies. And the pot is a voltage attenuator, giving us a bit of range control. This is what the schematics for this very simple circuit looks like. So let's build it. Make sure you have all the parts mentioned above, as well as a battery clip, a potentiometer knob, and a little enclosure to accommodate everything. Start by thoroughly cleaning your blank PCB. Then draw your sensor design on it with a Sharpie. Be creative with your design. There are infinite possible shapes that will work. Make multiple layers of Sharpie so it looks opaque, not transparent. We want to make sure the ferric chloride doesn't get through and corrode the copper under our design. When you're done, place the board in a container with the ferric chloride solution. Move it around a bit until all the copper surrounding the drawing is gone. Do this in a ventilated space and do use gloves. This stuff is toxic. Sharpie can be easily removed with alcohol. I had no alcohol, so I sprayed the board with some cologne my wife gave me. That worked fine. Once your touchpad is etched and clean, you can attach it to the enclosure. You can use glue or double-sided tape. I had some industrial velcro laying around and that worked well, even gave the pad some separation from the enclosure, which looks quite nice. Then drill holes into the PCB terminals and slightly wider holes in the enclosure for the wires to go through. Then drill holes for the output jack and the range pot. I use a wood drill which is pointy to make guide holes before actually drilling. Place and tighten both the pot and the jack. Now start wiring. Solder a wire from the negative battery terminal to a ground lug on the jack. Then run some wires from the inside of the box through the holes and into the touch plate terminals. And solder them on. Back inside the box, one of the terminal wires gets soldered to the positive battery terminal. Solder the capacitor to both outer legs of the potentiometer. The negative terminal of the cap should be on the side that will get bridged to ground. On mine, that's the right side, as you can see. The second terminal wire gets soldered to the left leg of the potentiometer. The right leg gets soldered to the pot body and then to the jack ground. And the wiper, which is the middle leg of the pot, gets soldered to the tip terminal of the output jack. That's it. Close it up and you're done. Let's check it out in action. First I'm feeding the touch plate CV to both the filters cutoff and the sample and hold, which is modulating the pitch of my VCO and clocking the envelope generators. <laughs> Now 
Now I'm skipping the sample and hold and the EGs and VCA and just controlling the filter and the VCO directly from the touch. And here's another fun thing to do, just some white noise through a filter. Blowing on the pad will make it sound like you're creating intense polar winds with your breath. That's it, have fun with it. Possible improvements could be adding a buffer to the output, maybe one that amplifies too for more range. You can make a larger board with a bunch of these too and control multiple parameters of your patch simultaneously. And you can even make this into a module, replacing the battery with the 12 volts from your Eurorack system. Next week I'll be back with the first in my series of videos about the Erica Synths Polyvox Voice Bundle. Exciting stuff! Please like and subscribe and stay noisy! See you next week! <laughs>